What happened to my apple? It's only been out for an hour. That's gross. It's all brown. I guess I'll Google what happened. No, I'll just tell you what happened right now. This is a story about food spoilage by Hunter Sampson, Katie Barefoot, and Kristen Egarin. Food spoilage is the deterioration of the original nutritional value, texture, and flavor of foods, due in part to three types of microorganisms, yeast, molds, and bacteria. Okay. Common bacterial species involved in food spoilage include members of the genus Clostridium, often involved in thermophilic anaerobic spoilage, and more resilient bacteria such as Bacillus coagulans, spore-forming and capable of growth in acidic mediums. Commonly recognized fungi or molds include Bisoclamus fulva and numerous species of Aspergillus. Yeasts associated with food spoilage that have been known to survive and flourish under poor conditions include Saccharomyces cerevisiae, Candida cruci, Zygosaccharomyces ruxii, Britannomyces intermedius, etc. There are several basic indicators of food spoilage. These include smell, texture, and physical appearance. Oftentimes, odor is significant in determining whether or not a product is safe for consumption. In the case of sour milk, an odor is produced as a result of bacterial fermentation, which results in the production of lactic acid and other acidic byproducts. In meat, the smell of sulfur and ammonia is indicative of protein breakdown by bacteria and enzymes. Changes in the texture of a food product are common when exposed to spoilage organisms. In fruits, a slimy texture indicates that bacteria are present and have begun to produce carbohydrates. Another example would be soft vegetable, which is caused by the breakdown of cellulose by microorganisms. Changes in appearance are often quite obvious indicators of food spoilage. These would include the presence of mold or changes in color or conformation. Microorganisms such as molds, yeasts, and bacteria are usually the culprits of food spoilage. These organisms find their way into our food and begin to grow and multiply. As they grow, they produce substances, substances that change the color, texture, and odor of the food. Eventually, the food will be changed so much that it is unfit for human consumption. Bacteria are known for the most rapid spoiling of protein-based foods, such as meat, poultry, fish, and dairy. The waste they produce is the cause of the foul smell and rotten appearance of spoiled foods. Sometimes, spoiled foods appear and smell safe, but can still contain harmful bacteria such as Salmonella and E. coli. Molds and yeasts are known for souring milk, rotting fruits and vegetables, and growing on our breads and cheeses. Although they generally work slower than bacteria, they are more tolerant of extreme conditions. In order to get a better understanding of the mechanism of food spoilage, let's focus on a process called soft rot that often spoils our favorite foods. Imagine you are hungry and looking for something healthy to eat. You go to the kitchen and reach for a banana on the fruit basket on the counter. Oops! As you grab the banana, an apple falls to the floor. You pick it up and place it into the basket without realizing the chain of rotting events you just set into place. When the apple hit the floor, it obtained a small bruise. This bruise is made up of cells that tore open when the apple landed. These tiny cuts act as a doorway for molds, yeast, and bacteria to enter the apple. Bacteria such as Pseudomonas are infamous for their spoilage capabilities and are part of the normal flora living on the apple skin. Pseudomonas fluorescens and Erwinia carotivora are two specific bacteria known to cause soft rot. P. fluorescens is notorious for being psychotropic, which means it can flourish in cold, and cold environments like refrigerators. E. carotivora flourish at room temperature. Together, the bacteria immediately begin the soft rot process. The molds force their way from cell to cell using sugar from the apple as energy to multiply. Meanwhile, the yeast have also been using their fair share of the apple sugar and fermenting it to produce alcohol. While the molds and yeast feast on the apple sugar, P. fluorescens and E. carotivore are going to work on the apple's proteins. The bacteria immediately begin feeding on the cells that were injured during the fall. As they replicate, they produce pectolytic enzymes that degrade and break down the apple cell's wall. As the cell walls are broken down, the intracellular fluid spills out and provides more food for the bacteria. On the outside, the apple is slowly getting softer and softer as the bacteria macerate the cells inside. Eventually, 
The molds, yeast, and bacteria devour the cells in the apple until there's nothing left. Next thing you know, you're in the kitchen looking for an apple, but all you see is this. The exact mechanism of spoilage may vary between yeast and bacteria. For example, yeasts are able to survive in environments with high concentrations of sugar and salt. They can often be found lurking in our juices, jams, salad dressings, and drinks. Some typical spoilage yeasts include Zygosaccharomyces, Torula laspora, and Lachancia. Yeasts slowly go through the sugar fermentation process and produce carbon dioxide that can build up in containers and distort or even explode the packaging. Yeast can also cause changes in color due to substantive growth, unpleasant odors, and bad flavor. Contrary to popular belief, spoiled foods are not always harmful to eat. We even spoil some foods on purpose to make things like yogurt and alcoholic beverages. Even if food is spoiled to the point that it looks or smells funny, that doesn't necessarily mean it contains microbes that can make you sick. In fact, most of our spoiled fruits and vegetables are not actually contaminated with harmful pathogens. They have just been changed to the point where they are too unappealing to eat. However, it is always better to be safe than to be sorry. Sometimes spoiled foods contain microbes that are not helpful to us called pathogens. When ingested, these pathogens can cause the dreaded food poisoning. The fact that spoiling foods are a breeding ground for bacteria make them more likely to contain pathogens like E. coli or salmonella. Clostridium botulinum is a bacteria that can find its way into spoiled canned foods. If ingested, this bacteria can cause botulism which is an extremely harmful disease that can cause weakness, double vision, and muscle paralysis. A type of spoilage is thermophilic anaerobic spoilage, which occurs if canned foods are incubated at high temperatures, there is a chance for the thermophilic bacteria that survive to germinate and cause more trouble. So, this is a common cause of spoilage in low acid canned foods at the commercial level. This graph depicts common types of spoilage in acid-containing canned foods. So, now we know what food spoilage is, but how can we prevent this? Louis Pasteur used the technique of pasteurization, which is mild heating, that caused certain organisms that are responsible for the spoilage without damaging the taste of the product. Many heat-resistant bacteria can survive pasteurization, but these typically do not cause disease. The dairy industry routinely uses a test to determine whether products have been pasteurized. The fossil taste test, and if it isn't pasteurized, the fossil taste will become inactive. Other types of preventions are fungicides and herbicides. Fungicides are used to kill or prevent fungi living on certain foods. The fungicides used in this process are all FDA approved and have not found to be harmful to the body. We can also use preservatives. These prevent decomposition of food that would have occurred from bacteria otherwise. Preservatives can be gels, sulfites, and benzoic acids. These, present, these prevent the oxidation of food constituents. We can also use refrigeration. Certain products have to be refrigerated because certain bacteria want a higher temperature to grow, and this colder temperature slows down their reaction rate. We can heat food to kill some organisms growing on the food, too. Don't let food sit out for too long after the expiration date, and most bacteria will grow in a pH between 6.5 and 7.5. Mold and yeast will grow over a greater pH range than bacteria will. We can also use the technique of canning which is a type of commercial sterilization, which is where we steam under pressure to get rid of any bacteria growing on the foods. This is the same idea as an autoclave. Another type is packaging. Aseptic packaging is used to preserve food. This technique uses packages which can withstand conventional heat treatment and is fed through a machine that sterilizes the material. Radiation. Ionizing radiation, such as gamma rays and electron beams, destroy microorganisms and bacteria found on food. By radiation, this can delay ripening and increase certain product yields. We can also use a microwave. This can not only heat your food up, but can also damage bacteria cells that would have been harmful to your food. And this is food spoilage. Please see our video description for any sources.